Be quiet, starting now. Quiet, please. Welcome to another episode of Bravo Charlie's. This is our first video with our new Lodge cast iron skillet. This is going to be chicken piccata. This is my little twist on chicken piccata. It's 85% traditional with a few little modifications that I like. Um, quick list of the ingredients and then we're going to get right into cooking. Chicken piccata is incredibly easy to make. Chicken marsala, also incredibly easy to make. I'm going to do a video on that. I'll put the description right there. I will also, for this cast iron skillet, I did an unboxing episode of that a while back and I'll put right up here a link to that video as well so you could learn a little bit more about this, uh, this skillet. I've been using it, it works really good. Veal or chicken piccata is done the exact same way. So I'm doing chicken breast today, but by all means you can do veal if you want to. So we are going to need extra virgin olive oil and butter for the skillet, as well as one tablespoon of bacon fat. So when I make bacon on Saturday and Sunday morning for me and the kids and the wife, I save the bacon fat, pour it into a little Tupperware container, stick it in my refrigerator, let it chill, and it becomes like, looks like Crisco. So we're gonna put one tablespoon of this, this is one of the little modifications I do, in with our other fats into the skillet, and this really gives it a unique flavor. We are going to need four tablespoons of, which is equivalent to, wait, I take that back. I went with a third cup, a third cup of white wine. Third cup of white wine, any kind of drinking white wine that you like, this happens to be Pinot Grigio. We're gonna need some kosher salt and some pepper for seasoning the chicken breasts. We're gonna need a little flour that we're gonna dredge the chicken breasts in before they go into the skillet. I don't have that set out yet, but you'll see that process here in a second. But I have four chicken breasts that we're gonna pound flat. We are going to need lemon and lime, just a half of each. We are going to need two to three garlic cloves, depending on how much you like garlic. These garlic cloves are kind of small. Runaway garlic. These garlic cloves are kind of small, so I have three of them. And it's October, so the last of my herb garden is uh, being picked right now. Uh, this is rosemary. I have a good, let's see, two and a half sprigs of rosemary. We're going to strip this down and just throw it right in the skillet with the chicken. And of course, capers. I really like the taste of capers, so I have two full tablespoons of capers in here with a little bit of the juice from the jar, and we're going to pour this in to the skillet as well. What makes this easy is everything is done in the skillet. Everything goes in one skillet. The sauce that's left in the skillet, drizzle over the chicken, mashed potatoes, rice, whatever you're having as your side dish with this. Everything in here, cook it serve it, and you're done. And because we're gonna pound the chicken breast flat with this mallet right here, this kitchen mallet that I have has a metal side with prongs on it. It really helps break up the meat fibers and get the, uh, get the chicken breast pounded flat. So if you don't have one of these, don't buy one with just wood, a wood mallet on both ends. See if you could find one with this metal attachment on the one side because it really does help, especially for things like chicken. These chicken breasts are about an inch and a half thick and we're gonna have to get them down to about a third of an inch thick. So we're gonna use this on those, dredge them in, uh, in flour, no milk, no eggs. We're not doing a breading. We're just doing a quick coat in flour and then they're gonna go right into a hot skillet. So. There you have all the ingredients. I will put the ingredient list in the description below so you can expand the description and get all the information on this dish right there. And we will start with the prep work of getting the chicken ready, 
and dredged in the flour, and then we'll move on to the skillet. Okay, so here we are with the setup on the chicken breasts, and what I did is I took a, uh, a plastic cutting board, put the four chicken breasts on it, and I covered it with several sheets of saran wrap, and I tucked it underneath. So there's no way that when we hit these, you don't want any of the chicken juice or, or the raw chicken juice splashing out on your counter. So this is one of those instances where more is better. The more sheets you put on here, the less chance you have of one of them breaking and the raw chicken juice spilling out on yourself, on other things around your counter and spreading, uh, what, salmonella and botulism, whatever the heck you can get from raw chicken. You don't want it. So I have the four chicken breasts here and we're gonna use the metal side of the mallet and you're just gonna hit them until you feel the meat fibers break down. And they're gonna flatten out like a pancake. If you have an excessively thick one, you'll have to hit it a few more times at the thickest spot to get the fibers to break and then it'll flatten right out. Okay, now showing you what this looks like. We now have thin pieces, basically chicken cutlets. And these will cook. We're gonna cook these over medium high heat and they will cook really fast. Three or four minutes aside max. We're gonna flip them and this is gonna be done real fast. So once you start this cooking process, there is no stopping. You need to, uh, you, this, is, this is a dish you can't walk away from. So have your other sides done and then when you get ready for the meat, you can uh, just hit this real quick and your dinner's ready to go. So all we're gonna do is take these, I prepared a little bit of flour, this is about three quarters of a cup of flour, and just dredge them. The moisture of the chicken itself will make sure the flour sticks. <clears throat> Shake off any excess, and you just want a thin coating just like that. We're going to do that with each one. Just putting them in the flour and getting everything coated nicely. Okay, so I'm going to keep the frame in tight here so you can see what's going on. I have four tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and one tablespoon of the bacon the bacon grease. It's going to sizzle, this is going to be hot, it's going to move fast, so here we go. We're going to start with the garlic cloves, putting those in. We have our, let me get the salt and pepper here ready. We're going to add the chicken cutlets in. Just be careful, this is going to be very hot. Okay, we're going to add the pepper, quickly. We only have about three minutes to do this and then we're going to be flipping them over because this pan is real hot. It's going to cook these thin little pieces of chicken fast. Add some salt on top. We're going to add, I stripped the rosemary off the stems and gave it a rough chop. We're going to add that. We're going to add the capers. We are going to add the third cup of white wine. Let this cook for a minute and you can really smell all the butter and the wine coming off of here. It just smells tremendous. Leave this plate here for the cutlets as soon as they come off. See they're starting to already cook on the bottom a little bit. Mm. 
We are also going to add, at this time, with my citrus press, lime juice, and lemon juice. Okay, it's been a few minutes. See, we're getting a nice little golden brown on the bottom of that. Turning these over now. This is gonna have a nice lemony butter flavor to it. We're gonna add salt and pepper to this side. So we only added it to the other side, remember. Just a little. You do not have to overpower this with salt and pepper because we have all those other flavors in here with the garlic, with the capers. There's no need to overpower this. So we're going to let this go for a couple more minutes and what's left behind will be the sauce that we use to pour over top of the finished dish. This one's looking close to done. I really do like this Lodge uh, cast iron skillet. It, you can see every single piece is cooking about the same. So we're gonna let this go for another minute or two and then we're gonna be done. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna take these off now. They are fully cooked. Been about four minutes per side. See how nice and golden brown that looks? Cooked perfectly. Be careful of the splatter, it will splash. Oh, that one looks great. So there you have it, chicken piccata. It's not that difficult, it is quick, there are a few techniques involved, but something simple that you can do, you can do it, give it a try, you'll like this. Um, if you buy, if you don't have a mallet, I thought of this after I uh, talked about that, you can always have your butcher do it. So if you go to the grocery store and buy some chicken, chicken breast from the butcher counter, not the frozen ones, but the fresh ones in the butcher counter, you can always ask them to pound them, to take the bones out, take the fat off, and pound them flat into cutlets, bring them home that way, that way they're already uh, ready to go, ready to go right in the skillet. You don't have to go through the work. All you have to do is dredge them in the flour, pop them in the skillet once you have everything in there. So we got the capers and everything else. Check the description below. I'll put all the ingredients that I use down there so you can refer to those later. Give this a try, you'll like it. So if you like this content, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button below for future videos. Also in the description below will be the ingredients list as well as my Facebook link, Pinterest, and Twitter. You can find me on all three of those sites on the Pinterest and the Facebook pages, I try and put different tips throughout the week for adult beverages, wines, whiskeys. On Fridays, I try and do things like that. And then throughout the week, cooking tips. If I happen to be in the kitchen and think of something neat that you guys might like, I put it up there on Facebook or attached in Pinterest or sometimes both. So thank you for joining me for another week on uh, Bravo Charlie's and see you next time. Thank you.